The Persians are coming! The terrifying news raced through Athens like a rapidly spreading fire. The very name of the Persians meant terror to all the Greeks. And now King Darius had sent an army of Persian foot soldiers and cavalry, or soldiers on horseback, to punish the Athenians. Darius was angry that Athens had helped other Greek city-states fight against Persia. Remember that although the ancient Greek city-states were mostly independent, they did help each other during emergencies like invasions. A fleet of 600 ships had brought as many as 20,000 experienced Persian soldiers to a beach about 26 miles from Athens, near a wide, flat plain called Marathon. There are not enough of us to face them, moaned an Athenian army general. Besides, no one can beat Persian soldiers. But another Athenian general, a man named Miltiades, answered, The Persians fight for a king most of them have never seen, and who cares nothing for them. We fight for our freedom and for the freedom of our children. That must be worth something in battle. Remember, the Athenians came up with the idea for democratic rule. Now in those days, the Athenians had ten elected generals, plus another military leader called a polemarch. The polemarch was not a general, but he represented the Athenian government during military discussions. Callimachus, the polemarch, gathered along with the ten generals, including Miltiades, to create a plan of defense. One of the generals said, The plain of Marathon is a perfect place for the Persians to attack us. There is room for their horsemen to move all around us, and there will be nothing for us to go to avoid or keep away from their well-organized soldiers fighting on foot. A plain is a large flat area of land, so the generals know the Persians can fit many horsemen in this large flat area. Another general suggested, Let us send our fastest runner to Sparta. The Spartans are the greatest fighters in Greece. If they will help us, we might have a chance. But it was 150 miles from Athens to Sparta, and some of the journey included rugged mountains and streams. The generals knew that they would need a runner who was fast and strong. Pheidippides is our man, the generals agreed. No one in Athens can touch him for speed over a long distance. So they sent swift-footed Pheidippides to call on the Spartans for help. Then the generals called together all 10,000 Athenian men of fighting age. In every Athenian home there were tearful goodbyes. At last, the Athenians started off toward the plain of Marathon, about 26 miles away. Meanwhile, the Persians were camped on the beach near the edge of the plain. The Persian commander in charge told his men, We will win such a great victory here for King Darius that the rest of the Greeks will simply surrender to us. The Persians were so confident, their commander took no special steps to guard his camp other than sending the cavalry off on their horses to search the area a few times a day. As all this was happening, the strong legs and powerful heart of the Athenian messenger, Pheidippides, carried him toward Sparta. Pheidippides ran as he had never run before, stopping only a few times to drink from the streams or rivers. He ran for almost three days until he reached Sparta and the two Spartan kings. You must come with your armies at once or it will be too late. To his horror, the Spartan kings answered, We cannot leave before tomorrow. Sparta is in the middle of a religious holiday honoring the gods, and our law says we must finish before we can leave to fight. By then the battle will be over and we will have lost, Pheidippides exclaimed. He set out again to carry the news to the Athenians that they would be on their own. As it turned out, this was not true. As the Athenians marched toward Marathon, 
A thousand Greeks from another city, having heard the news, joined them. Together, the 11,000 Greeks marched over the mountains to the plain of Marathon. As they did so, Pheidippides arrived to say, The Spartans cannot help us. The generals were horrified. The Persian army is much bigger than ours, with many more soldiers, one pointed out fearfully. We should surrender and beg for mercy, cried a second. Mercy is an act of compassion or kindness. There will be no mercy, said Miltiades, the general who had spoken boldly or with courage back in Athens. The Persians are here because we helped other Greeks strike back against them. The Persians will not stop until they have destroyed us. The ten generals voted, should they surrender or should they attack? Each side won five votes. Then Miltiades remembered something. Callimachus was allowed to vote too. Miltiades told him, The decision rests with you. You will decide whether we surrender and agree to serve the Persians, suffering all that this will bring, or whether we will fight and live as free people. Callimachus trusted Miltiades. What do you think? he asked. Miltiades answered, If we do not fight, the people of Athens will be frightened too and will surrender the city to the enemy. All of Greece will follow, but if we attack before fear sweeps through our camp, I believe we will win. Callimachus said, Then let us fight. Luck was with them. The Persian commander had sent his cavalry off again to make sure No other Greek armies were approaching. While the horsemen were away, the Greeks spread out in a wide line. The Greek generals purposefully, or with deliberate planning, put more men at either end of their wide line, leaving the middle as the weakest part. Then, shouting a loud battle cry, the Greeks charged. The Persians were startled. No one ever ran toward them. Nevertheless, they moved forward toward the Greeks. Look how weak those fools have left their middle, laughed the Persian leader. But the laugh was on him, for just as the Greeks had planned, the Persians moved to the middle first and pushed back the Greek line. But then the stronger Greek forces on the edges circled around and attacked from the sides, catching the Persians between them. The Persians, confused and unable to defend themselves, turned and ran for their ships with the Greeks hot on their heels. In fact, the Greeks captured seven Persian ships before the Persians could even reach them. The other Persians sailed away. We have beaten the mighty Persians, the Greeks told one another in amazement or surprise. Then they remembered their families waiting for news at home. Legend says that Pheidippides proudly volunteered, I shall carry the news. He set out again, leaving the scene of the battle at Marathon, and he reached the gates of Athens. The people gathered around him. He was just able to gasp out one word, victory. Then his great heart, which had carried him to Sparta and back, finally gave out. Pheidippides fell dead at the gates of Athens. In tribute to Pheidippides, the Greeks measured the distance he had run from Marathon to Athens, and those 26 miles became the distance of their long-distance races. A tribute is a gift or compliment that is given to honor or remember the contributions of a particular person or group. And this is why today we call a long-distance race a marathon, in memory of Pheidippides and all those who fought for freedom on the plains of Marathon. Today the word marathon can mean a 26-mile race or any long-distance race or endurance contest.